Hello everyone. This is a small guide on the 13 most common gestures you'll see daily. Let's get into it. The head nod. In most cultures, the head nod is used to signify yes or agreement. It's a stunted form of bowing. The person symbolically goes to bow but stops short, resulting in a nod. Bowing is a submissive gesture, so the head nod shows we're going along with the other person's point of view. Research conducted with people who were born deaf, dumb, and blind shows that they were they also use this gesture to signify yes. So it appears to be an inborn gesture of submission. In India, the head is rocked from side to side, called the head wobble, to signal yes. This is confusing for Westerners and Europeans who use this gesture to communicate maybe yes, maybe no. As we, in Japan, head nodding doesn't necessarily mean yes, I agree. It usually means yes, I hear you. In Arab countries, they use a single upward head movement, which means no, while Bul Bulgarians use a common gesture, no, gesture to mean yes. Slow nodding means interest, while fast nodding means impatience. The head shake. Research also indicates that the head shake, usually meaning no, may also be an inborn action that evo evolutionary biologists believe that is the first gesture that humans learn. This theory says that when a newborn baby has had had enough milk, it shakes its head from side to side to reject its mother's breast. Similarly, a kid who has had enough to eat uses the head shake to reject attempts to spoon feed him. When someone is trying to convince you, watch if they use the head shake gesture while they saying agree. The, the person who says, I can see your point of view, or it sounds good, or we'll definitely do business, while shaking his head from side to side might sound convincing, but the head shake gesture signals a negative attitude and you would be well advised to be skeptical about it. The, the basic head positions. There are three basic head positions. The first is with head up and is the position taken by the person who has a neutral attitude about what is being said. The head remains still and the conversation may be punctuated by occasional small nods. Hand to cheek, hand to cheek evaluation gestures are often used for this position. When the head is lifted high with the chin jutting forward, it signals superiority, fearlessness, or arrogance. The person intentionally exposes the throat and they gain additional height, which allows them to look down on their nose at you. Large chins are the result of high testosterone levels, which is why chin jutting is associated with power and aggression. The head tilt. Tilting the head to the side is a submission signal because it exposes the throat and neck and makes the person look smaller and less threatening. Its probable origin is in the baby resting its head on the parent's shoulder or chest, and the submissive, non-threatening meaning it conveys seems to be unconsciously understood by most people, especially women. Charles Darwin was one of the first to note that humans, as well as animals, especially dogs, tilt their heads to one side when they become interested in something. Women will use this gesture to show interest in men they fancy because a woman who is non-threatening and shows submission is attractive to most men. Studies of paintings from the last 2000 years show that women are depicted three times as often as men using the head tilt and women are shown in advertisements tilting the heads three times as often as men. This shows how most people understand on an intuitive level that displaying the neck shows submission. In business negotiations with men, however, a woman should keep her head up at all times. Head down. When the chin is down, it signals that a negative judgmental or aggressive attitude exists. Critical evaluation gestures clusters are normally made with the head down and until the person's head lifts or tilts. The head shrug. Raising the shoulders and pulling the head down between them 
lets a person protect the vulnerable neck and throat from injury. It's the cluster used when a person hears a loud bang behind them or if they think something will follow them. When it's used in a personal or business context, it implies a submissive apology, which detracts from any encounter where you are trying to be appear confident. Picking imaginary lint. When a person disapproves of the opinions or attitudes of others but doesn't want to say anything, displacement gestures are likely to occur. That is, apparently innocent body language gestures that reveal a withheld opinion. Picking imaginary pieces of lint from one's own clothing is one such gesture. The lint picker usually looks down and away from others while performing this seemingly minor irrelevant action. This is a common signal of disapproval and is a good sign that he doesn't like what's being said even when he sounds as if he's agreeing with everything. Open your palms and say, what do you think? Or, I can see you have some thoughts on this. Would you mind telling me what they are? Sit back, arms apart, palms visible, and wait for the answer. If the person says he is in agreement with you, but still continues to pick the imaginary lint, you may need to take an even more direct approach to discover his hidden objections. Hands on hips. Hands on hips is used by the child arguing with its parent, the athlete waiting for his event to begin, the boxer waiting for the bout to start, and males who want to issue a non-verbal challenge to other males who enter their territory. In each instance, the person takes the hands on hips pose and this is a universal gesture to communicate that a person is ready for assertive action. It lets the person take up more space and has the threat value of the pointed elbows that act as weapons, preventing others from approaching or passing. The arms being half raised show readiness for attack and this is the position taken by cowboys in a gunfight. Even one hand on the hip will send the intended message particularly when it's pointed at the intended victim. It's used everywhere in the Philippines and Malaysia. It carries the even stronger message of anger and or outrage. Also known as the readiness gesture, that is, a person is ready for assertive action, its basic meaning carries a subtly aggressive attitude everywhere. It also has been called the achiever stance, related to the goal person who is ready to tackle their objectives or is ready to take action on something. Men often use this gesture around women to display an assertive male attitude. It's important to consider the context and other body language immediately preceding the hands on hips pose in order to make an accurate assessment of the person's attitude. For example, is the coat open and pushed back onto the hips or is it buttoned when the aggressive pose is taken. Closed coat readiness shows frustration, whereas coat open and pushed back is directly aggressive because the person is openly exposing their front in a display of fearlessness. This position is further reinforced by placing the feet evenly apart on the ground or by adding clenched fists to the gesture cluster. These aggressive readiness clusters are used by professional models to give the impression that their clothing is for modern, assert assertive, forward-thinking women. Occasionally, the gesture may be done with only one hand on the hip and the other displaying another gesture, and this is commonly used by women who want to draw attention to themselves by using this cluster with a pelvic tilt to emphasize the hips-to-waist ratio, which indicates fertility. Hands on hips is regularly used by both men and women in courtship to draw attention to themselves. The cowboy stance. Thumbs tucked into the belt or into the tops of the pockets frames the genital area and is a display used mainly by men to show a sexually aggressive attitude. It is the most common gesture used in television westerns to show viewers the virility of their favorite gunslinger. Also jokingly called man of the long thumbs gesture, 
The arms take the readiness position and the hands serve as central indicators, highlighting the crotch. Men use this gesture to stake the territory or to show other men that they are unafraid. Apes use the same gesture but without a belt or trousers. This gesture tells others, I am virile, I can dominate, which is why it's irregular for men on the prowl. Any man talking to a woman while he's standing like this, with dilated pupils and one point footing towards her, is easily read by most women. It's one of the gestures that gives the game away for most men, as they unwittingly declare to her what's on their mind. This gesture is principally used by men, but women wearing jeans and trousers can occasionally be seen doing it too. When wearing dresses or skirts, the sexually assertive female displays one or both thumbs tucked into a belt or pocket. Sizing up the competition. The next illustration shows two men sizing each other up, using the characteristic hands on hips and thumbs in belt gestures. Considering that they are both turned at an angle away from each other and the lower halves of their bodies appear relaxed, it's reasonable to assume that they are unconsciously evaluating each other and that confrontation is unlikely. Their conversation may sound casual or friendly, but a relaxed atmosphere won't exist until their hands on hips gestures are dropped and open gestures or head tilting are used. If these two men were directly facing each other with their feet planted firmly on the ground and legs apart, a fight could be likely. The legs spread. This is almost entirely a male gesture and is also seen among apes who are trying to establish authority over other apes. Rather than risk injury fighting, they spread their legs and the one with the most biggest display is seen as the most dominant. And so it is with male humans, even though it's un usually done unconsciously, it sends a powerful message. If one man does the leg spread, the others will usually mirror to maintain status, but it has a very negative effect when a man uses it in front of a woman, especially in a business context, because she can't mirror it. Videotaped meetings reveal that many women re respond by crossing their legs and arms, which immediately puts them on the defensive. The advice for men here is clear. Keep your legs together in business meetings. If you're a woman who is constantly confronted by a crotch displaying male, don't react when he does it. It can work against you only if you respond defensively. Leg over the arm of chair. This is mainly done by men because it also uses the legs spread. It not only signifies the man's ownership of the chair, it also signals that he has an informal aggressive attitude. It is common to see two male friends laughing and joking with each other while sitting this way. But let's consider its impact in different circumstances. Let's say a employee has a personal problem and goes to his boss for advice. That as, as the employee explains, he leans forward in the chair his hands on his knees, his head down, with a dejected expression and voice lowered. The boss listens, sitting motionless, then leans back on his chair and puts one leg over the arm. The boss's attitude has now changed to lack of concern or indifference. In other words, he has little concern for the employee or his problem, and he may even feel that he is being wasted by the same old story. So what was, the what was the boss indifferent about? He may have considered the employee's problem, decided that it's not much of a problem anyway, and became disinterested. He may even tell his employee not to worry and that the problem will simply go away. As long as the boss's leg stays over the arm of the chair, his indifferent attitude will persist. When the employee leaves the office, the boss breathes a sigh of relief and says to himself, Thank heavens he's gone and takes his left leg off the arm of the chair. The leg over the arm of the chair can be annoying when it occurs during negotiation and it is vital to make that person change position because the longer he stays in it, the longer he will have an indifferent or aggressive attitude. 
An easy way to do this is to ask him to lean across and look at him, look at something, or if you have a wicked sense of humor, tell him there's a split in his trousers. Straddling a chair. Centuries ago, men used shields to protect themselves from the spears and clubs of the enemy, and today, civilized man use whatever he has at his disposal to the sun to symbolize this same protective behavior when he is under a physical or verbal attack. This includes standing behind a gate, doorway, fence, desk, or the open door of his motor vehicle, and straddling a chair. The back of the chair acts as a shield to protect the body and can transform a person into an aggressive, dominant personality. Men also have their legs spread in a wide crotch display, adding male assertion to their position. Most straddlers are dominant types who will try to take control of others when they become bored with the conversation, and the back of the chair serves as good protection from any attack by other members of the group. The straddler is often discreet and can slip into this, the straddle position almost unnoticed. The easiest way to disarm the straddler is to stand behind him or sit behind him, making him feel vulnerable to attack and forcing him to change his position. This can work well in a group situation because the straddler will have his back exposed and this compels him to change into another position. The catapult. This is a seated version of the hands on hip pose, but the hands are behind the head with the elbows menacingly pointing out. Again, it's almost an entirely male gesture used to in intimidate others or it infers a relaxed attitude to lure you into a false sense of security just before he ambushes you. This gesture is typical of professionals such as accountants, accounted lawyers sales managers or people who are feeling superior dominant or confident about something if we could read this person's mind he would be saying things such as i have all the answers or everything is under control or even maybe maybe one day you'll be as smart as me management personnel regularly use it and newly appointed male managers suddenly begin to use it despite the fact that they seldom used it prior prior to their promotion. It is also used by know-it-all individuals and it intimidates most people. It's a trademark gesture of men who like you to realize just how knowledgeable they are. It can also be used as a territorial sign to show that the person has staked a claim in that personal area. It is usually clustered with a figure four leg position or crotch display which shows that he not only feels superior, he is also likely to argue or try to dominate. There are several ways you can deal with this gesture depending on the circumstances. You can lean forward with the palms up and say, I can see that you have I can see that you know about this. Would you like to care <clears throat> would you like to comment? Then sit back and wait for an answer. Gestures that show when a person is ready. One of the most valuable gestures a negotiator can learn to recognize is seated readiness. When you're presenting a proposal, for example, if the other person were to take this gesture at the end of the presentation and the interview had gone well up to that point, you could ask for agreement and would likely to get it. Video replays of salespeople interviewing potential buyers revealed that whenever the seated readiness gesture followed a chin stroke decision making, the client said yes to the proposal more than half of the time. In contrast, if during the close of the sale, the client took the arms crossed position immediately after the shin stroke, the sale was usually not made. The seated readiness gesture can also be taken by the angry person who is ready for something else, to throw you out. The preceding gesture clusters indicate the person's real intentions. The starter's position. Readiness gestures that signal a desire to conclude a meeting include leaning forward with both hands on both knees or leaning forward with both hands gripping the chair as if they were at the start of a race. If either of these occur during a conversation, it would be wise for you to take the lead and resell, change direction, or terminate the conversation. 
Summary The body language signals covered in this video are fairly easy to observe because most involve big gestures. Not only is it important to understand the significance of these gestures, it's vital to good communication that eliminate any negative gestures from your own repertoire and practice using the things that will give you positive results. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.